tractor's ready for the first snow that's coming this weekend. These are so the plows don't mangle up my, my lawn here. Alright, so for tonight's video, it is night, um, I took out my snow blower out of the shed uh, today. There it is, errands. Uh, I'll fire it up in the morning. Uh, I checked the oil level, everything, everything seemed to be fine. Uh, but one thing that I do need to replace is uh, the pull cord. I'm just going to get you a better view here. So, as you can see, it's missing. Uh, it snapped on me last year, and uh, fortunately, I do have an electric start that I was able to use. But uh, I want to be able to uh, operate this manually as well, or start it manually, uh, in case the power goes out or something like that. Sometimes it's just easier to, to, to pull it to start rather than having to deal with extension cords and things like that. So I definitely want to get this off. Uh, this comes off really easily. There's just a uh, screw here and a screw on the other side. You just take those off and this whole unit comes right off. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Alright, so I get the unit off now. Um, as you can see here. Uh, basically what happens is when you pull the pull cord it turns this uh, and then turns the um, flywheel on the uh, on the engine. Uh, so the first step was to remove the, uh, the old, old starter string right there. Uh, sometimes it gets bound up underneath here and it can be a real pain uh, to get it out. So um, this one came out pretty easily. So. so this is what we'll be using to replace the uh, pull cord. It's just a basic standard uh, handle replacement. Got it at uh, Home Depot. Uh, let's get directions on the back. Uh, pretty rudimentary, but um, I'll take this out and give it a go. So the first step is to just insert the, uh, the string through the handle, as you can see. Right, and then just pull it up, and then you'll want to make a few knots here. You, you'll be able to cut off the, the tag end of the knot, so uh, don't worry about the string being a little bit too long. They give you a lot of extra slack on these, so uh, don't use it. But but what, the main thing is you want to make sure the knot is big enough that it's not going to slide back through. So I always double or triple it um, just just to be safe. Last thing you want to do is to be starting this thing and having the knot release, and uh, then you're in trouble. So So I go two, maybe three. That's usually pretty good. And then you can actually get a get a, uh, a wrench. I don't have one right here, but just to give it a give it a good pull. That way it's nice and tight, and then you can just simply cut cut this tag end off if you want. Next up here is you just want to take uh, and turn the wheel uh, counterclockwise until it's completely tight, so meaning you won't be able to turn it anymore. And then once that's done, what you'll want to do is turn it one complete revolution back. So once we've wound the unit, uh, what I actually do is take a screwdriver and I push it all the way through. That way it doesn't uh, jump on me and, and unwind. Um, so the next step, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but um, there's a little hole right here that you have to feed the string through. Um, Actually, if I was doing this right, what I'd do is I would feed the string through here uh, and out this side. Uh, but since that hole is so small, I think I'm going to do it backwards. And I'm going to feed the line in that way, make the knot, and then the, the line will come out here. Uh, and that's where I'll, I'll attach the, uh, the handle to. So this, this is extremely challenging. Uh, one thing I'll, I'll say, I took an old awl, it's a little rusty, but um, what I'm doing is I'm actually pushing that line in a little bit. That hole is so small for that string. Um, so this is just a little tip. Use a little awl or uh, maybe a nail punch or something small just to get it through that, that little hole initially. Alright, so now we've got the string through. 
uh, and we're going to make a knot on this end here. Uh, the directions say on this end, uh, through the handle. And since it was so hard to, to get the line through the hole here, uh, I'm going to do it reverse. So I'm just going to make that triple knot again, uh, and probably cut off the, the tag end with a pair of nippers. And we should be good to go for this step. It's probably a big enough double knot probably will do it, to be honest with you. And you know what? I'm probably not even going to bother cutting that tag off. I think that's fine. So I'm going to pull it through. Pull the string through. Yeah, I think that, that knot will be fine there. Um, now, the tricky part. Very carefully, I'm going to pull out the screwdriver that was holding this from spinning. And I'm just gently going to let the tension spin out of this. I don't want to let it all go. Just enough. So that it'll hold that handle on there firmly. Should be good. So at this point you want to make sure that you don't let go of the wheel because the the string will spin spin up there and I don't know how you'll ever get it out, but um, I'm gonna take the screwdriver, put it back in, turn this around and feed this through the handle. Okay. Like so. Now you get a good give it a little bit of tension. Make a nice knot there. And double it up. Triple it up just to be careful. Should be good to go. You can cut that tag off if you like. There it is. All set to remount on the unit. Alright, so I made a little bit of an adjustment here. As you can see, I made a new knot. Uh, I tried a couple practice pulls with this and realized uh, I wasn't getting enough tension on the wheel. Um, and so I kind of measured out how long. Uh, an arm pull for me would be without actually going all the way to the end. That's an important thing because if you're pulling a short pull and it's pulling on this knot, eventually that's going to break um, right there. So you want to make sure you're not going all the way around, um, but there, make sure there's enough tension on that line uh, to get that engine started. So I made a little bit of an adjustment, oh, about a little under a foot probably. Uh, made a new um, knot which we can go ahead and um, cut off the longer tag here um, and now now this is ready to be remounted I lied uh, I'm gonna do a couple more things here just for safe measure I'm gonna actually give this a little heat just to melt that uh, knot together uh, just a little extra insurance that that doesn't pull apart. Uh, actually, do the same thing. I'd be careful here against the plastic, but just give it a little, little melt. That should be good. Um, and then, as a final step, I'm going to actually take a little carb cleaner here. Just give it a little, give it a little spray down inside there. Um, just because some of that rust and maybe, I don't know, gunk in there might be contributing to fraying this this line down the road. So, well, I don't know how well that'll work, but maybe maybe give give it a shot of WD-40. It might work a little bit better. Didn't have any at my workshop. So, carb cleaner for now. All right, I promise we're going to go mount this. All right, so here it is. 
all mounted back up. So, just get it from this side actually. So it's ready to go, the handle, all good. Ready to pull. It's about 10 p.m., so I'm gonna do my neighbors a favor and wait till tomorrow morning uh, to give it a go. But uh, it should work, I'm confident. So that's gonna be it for another video. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you learned something today. Uh, you might be wondering why I look this ridiculous right now. I'm not a miner. Um, but actually, no, seriously, uh, if you don't have a headlamp, working at night, uh, it's absolutely essential. Uh, look, a lot of times I don't have time on the weekends. I've got kids that play sports and, you know, have all kinds of activities. I just, I can't get to DIY projects around the house on the weekends sometimes. So during the week, I've got to do it. And in this time of year, it gets dark at 4.30. So, you know, those are the times when you're going to have to be working in the dark. And that's just, that's just how it is. So having a headlamp is actually extremely useful. I know I look ridiculous. I don't really care. Um, but seriously, the, it'll, wherever you're looking, the, the light will illuminate. So you're able to get things done even when it's dark out, even if you look ridiculous like I do, whatever. But anyway, so, uh, I was pretty happy with the success of, of, uh, redoing that, uh, pull string. Uh, I've done one for a lawnmower in the past. Um, this one was a little bit different, but the same kind of, uh, techniques apply to doing any kind of pull start uh, for, for a motor. Um, pretty basic, but you know, if you don't know, if you've never done it before, hopefully this, this video was helpful. Uh, so with that said, thanks for coming around for another video. Keep getting those projects done and I'll see you next time. Yeah, baby.